Well, it appears I underestimated you, Nine Tails. I am sure to those whom had seen this animated story by myself and Tallow Sage had wondered what had canonically happened in the world of Naruto that led up to such developments as Naruto having wood style, being a senju, and even fighting off against the full force Akatsuki with access to KCM. Well, that's what we'll be going over in What If Naruto Was a Senju, the story. So, without further ado, let's get into this. Nezuko, believe it! Whoever insults my hair will get the full brunt of my fury. Shut up, you idiot! Hey, it's me, Goku! This version of Naruto, although seeming simple enough, being a senju and all, his heritage is kind of complicated. Starting, of course, with the granddaughter of the first Hokage himself, Tsunade Senju, and her past boyfriend, or even fiancé, Don Kato, would have given birth to a child called Minato Senju, who would go on to become the fourth Hokage. Minato would then meet someone called Kushina Uzumaki, who would be the next bearer of the Nine Tails, after Tsunade's grandmother, or his great-grandmother, as he would fall in love and thus have a child of his own in Naruto Senju. This is where things get rather odd, as there would have been an attack on the village, something unexpected by everyone before him, as the Nine Tails would be ripped from his impregnated wife at the cost of him saving his son. This would result in a battle between Minato and a masked man, as the Nine Tails would rampage through the village, only being stopped by the third Hokage and Tsunade. In this timeline, Tsunade was present during this attack, being able to thwart off at least some of the Nine Tails' attempts using her 100 healings technique. On the other hand, things would still go pretty grim, even though the presence of Asanin is noted. Minato and Kushino would still both die, sealing the Nine Tails with inside of their baby boy, Naruto. But, unlike usual, this Naruto would not be left alone, as his grandmother, Tsunade, would have been present during the Nine Tails attack, and thus would take her grandson in to raise him. As this goes and continues, the older Naruto gets, we see that Tsunade had been spending a lot less time on missions and had been in the village for a majority of her time in any way. And when she was out on missions, the other child she was raising, Shizune, niece of her previous fiancé, Don Kato, would take a older sibling type of role in attempting to help raise Naruto. On the other hand, this would obviously create a close relationship between Shizune and Naruto, and eventually they would even train together as Tsunade would start Naruto off with basic chakra control exercises at the age of 4 to get him prepped for what the shinobi world would be like, as she does want him to strive in things like the academy, since clans are usually allowed to take their representatives, in this case Naruto, and teach them the ways of their clan. Obviously, Tsunade cannot teach Naruto about wood style or anything like that, since it had not yet become apparent that he had a hold of the Keke Genkai. But nevertheless, Naruto would start off his training strong. He would also occasionally look at what Tsunade is teaching Shizune, and would try and mimic it himself more often than not either resulting in an explosion or just a straight failure. On the other hand, this is when Tsunade starts becoming more diplomatically active, as obviously Hiruzen would ask her to accompany him to things like Danyo meetings or meetings with other villages, since she is spending a lot of time at the Leaf. On the other hand, I feel as a year or so would have progressed past this point, Jiraiya would actually encourage Tsunade to take up the chair of Hokage. Hiruzen is getting old and there's no better time than right now for her to become Hokage. They're in a point where there is almost pure peace except for the trouble that had just happened with the cloud, obviously referring to Hinata's uncle or Hiyashi's brother, Neji's father, 
being killed because of the cloud attempting to kidnap Hinata. But nevertheless, this is still a time of semi-peace as no wars have been threatened or declared and villages are kind of at a standstill. Right now would be the perfect time for her to take up the seat with little responsibility, at least until someone worthy pops up. Obviously, we have a child Naruto who actually still wants to become Hokage, this time to honor the name of his father and clan, as even their mighty first Hokage was a part of this noble clan. Thus, he wants to become either the sixth or seventh Hokage. Tsunade would have picked this up and would actually think that it would be good for Naruto and possibly even herself if she took up the role of Kage, thus she would do it around Naruto being the age of 6. So we see her entire Hokage crowning ceremony and so on and so forth as she does start spending less and less time with Naruto and Shizune. Which, of course, would leave Naruto feeling semi-neglected if it weren't for Shizune using every off moment from her missions to teach Naruto whatever she can. I would like to point out around this time Shizune would not be a child anymore as she would be in her early 20s or exactly 20 by the time Naruto turned 6. So she would have probably either been a high level tuning or even a Jonin by now. Thus, I think Naruto has a lot to learn from her. But nevertheless, she cannot always be present. The same for Tsunade. So I feel Naruto would do everything he can to train on his own, trying to become like his father, a prodigy, and someone who can do anything if they put their mind to it. And thus, Naruto would be left with a lot of time to fill with the current neglect from his grandmother. Neglect being a strong term, her being Hokage makes her very busy. And on the other hand, Shizune at this point is probably in her early 20s, meaning that she is probably a Haichunin or Jonin with a medical background, meaning she has a lot of uses on the battlefield. So I feel that Shizune will pop in maybe once or twice a week with Tsunade at this point barely even coming home and when she does she goes straight to sleep. I feel Naruto would every now and then go to the Hokage Manor to try and talk to his grandmother, try and get her to teach him something, but more often than not I assume he would be off sad. Thus, he would be spending a lot of time training on his own, and I feel eventually he would wander off to try and find someone else to train with. And this, in my mind, is what would lead to what I'd assume to be him coming across other shinobi training, possibly even something like an Ambu Battleground, or just some tuning or Jonin. Because why I want this to happen is for him to see someone use either earth or water style, preferably earth, so that he could start mimicking it. On the other hand, I think he would start doing so by the first jutsu being something like earth wall, since I do see this being more likely than something like the headhunter, since it's most efficient against people like Genin. So, to start off with, I would want Naruto to practice the Earth Wall, which in my mind makes sense. Him constantly practicing he the Jutsu, he saw someone else do. I feel when he gets it down, gets a roundabout aptitude, he would want that little bit of attention from his grandmother that he had not been getting lately. Probably whilst a few months had passed, and he would go to the Hokage Manor, and he would start pestering her. Of course, she would get mad at first, but Naruto just wants her to come with him this one time so he could show her this one thing. She would feel bad for her grandson knowing that she hasn't been home lately, so she could take a few minutes out of her day to just do what he wants. Maybe they can have ramen after this and then she can get back to work. So she would go along with her grandson to the nearest training ground when he says, look at this, as he flies through the hand signs as quickly as he could, Pushing as much chakra into this jutsu or channeling as much chakra as he can possibly into this jutsu. Eventually even falling to his knee as more and more chakra is being channeled. When a giant line of trees emerge from the ground, spreading into the air, blossoming as it comes out. 
This leaves both Naruto and Tsunade in shock. He had only intended to make the biggest earth wall possible since he wanted to impress his grandmother. But trees? Why are there trees? Tsunade knows exactly what this is, and with the knowledge of what this is comes some sort of guilt, as she realizes that it's been a few months since she's even properly sat down and eaten with Naruto, that's why she came out here. But seeing that he was able to discover the Keke Genkai once held by her grandfather, the first Hokage, one of the greatest shinobi of all time, and probably one of the strongest Keke Genkai of all time, and her having nothing to do with it... It made her feel some sort of way. And she knows her as a Hokage can't leave all the time to teach Naruto wood style. So she'll come up with a compromise. She would then tell Naruto that he should go home and rest as she would call forth a strange Ambu with a weird headdress similar to the second Hokage's and brown spiky hair. He would take Naruto back to the Senju compound with Naruto wondering if his grandmother is mad at him for doing it wrong or wasting her time, so he is left to wonder. Which, after the Ambu, will return to the Hokage Tsunade, and she would most likely, this specific Ambu, obviously being Tenzin or Yamato, as she would tell him to remove the mask and tell him that he is now known as Yamato. For the foreseeable future, he will be Naruto's sensei, guide, and protector, as now having awakened wood style might make him a target. Yamato would gracefully accept as he had always wanted to interact with someone else that held this odd Keke Genkai he was in possession of. So, he would happily take the task. Some odd days would pass before Tsunade gets a chance to introduce Naruto to his new instructor, Yamato. Obviously, Naruto would at first think this is just a replacement for Tsunade not being there, until Tsunade tells Tenzin or Yamato to show off his skills. He would go through some hand signs as a giant wooden dragon would burst from the ground behind him, swirling around him, and then almost freezing into place as the head of the dragon blooms into leaves, leaving behind a swirl tree. Naruto would be impressed by this and asked if he messed up the earth style jutsu or if it was something else, with Tsunade laughing, seeing as her grandson thought his powerful Keke Genkai was nothing but a flop while she kind of doing earth style jutsu. She would explain that Naruto's great-great-grandfather, or the grandfather of hers, the first Hokage, had actually held the wood style and was one of the most powerful shinobi in the world because of it. And hopefully Tenzin, or she would say Yamato, would be able to help Naruto flourish this. The academy starts soon and she wants him to start off knowing where his limits are. She doesn't want him fighting fights he can't win, and he doesn't want... She doesn't want him to hurt any of the other students by not knowing what he is capable of. So, for these remaining months until the academy starts, he will be daily training with uh, Yamato until he can control his power. So, Naruto would probably mindlessly accept this as he would get a chance to train and become stronger to show off to his grand, uh, grandmother and possibly his big sister, or who he sees as a big sister, Shizune. This is where an interesting dilemma comes in, since we do know Jiraiya is in Naruto's life, but he will most likely not play that big of a role until later on. So for now, the training between him and Yamato would suffice. Yamato would obviously teach him basic things about wood style, but I do not think it's anything like the wood clone. That does seem a little more complicated since you are constantly morphing how the wood looks, how it moves, and so on and so forth. Things that wood wouldn't be able to do. So I think basic jutsu like maybe a wood bullet, wood shield, wood domes, um, wood walls, how to sprout trees... Maybe the occasional taijutsu fight with your arm turning into wood and so on and so forth. So basic things that Yamato could do. Naruto is still not even in the academy, keep that in mind. That's why he won't be doing that advanced stuff quite yet. But inevitably, the academy day would come. 
It would be early morning in Konoha as Naruto wakes up and prepares for his first day at the academy. He puts on his favorite clothes and looks to the kitchen as he wants to go make some breakfast. But first, the smell hits his nose. Someone is already doing it. He runs to go see whom it is to see his grandmother, Tsunade, standing there making him breakfast. After he would sit down and she would serve, they would have a small conversation. Obviously, Naruto asking her where she's getting the time to do this, as she should probably be in office right now, and her explaining that this is a very important day for Naruto as a shinobi. So, she decided to take the day off, and thus deliver him to school, and afterwards, she'll pick him back up, as she wants to see him become one of the greats, like her grandfather and his father. Naruto would have a giant smile on his face as he jumps up, prepared to leave. But first, Tsunade stops him. She takes him to a back room within the Senju compound and shows him a piece of armor. She says that it's not the one worn by her grandfather or his father, but instead the great Tobirama Senju, the second Hokage. And she believes that he would want Naruto to have this, as he's a genius in the making. Naruto would grab it, fitting it on himself, pulling all the belts tight so that it would fit his small body, as he feels excited. Tsunade would give a laugh and say that he'll eventually grow into it, so maybe leave it here for, to for today. With Naruto smiling, saying, Yeah, okay, I'll grow big and strong real fast, as he would be excited to go to his first day at the academy once again. Halfway to the academy, they would be met with Yamato, Naruto's current teacher, and even Shizune. All the important people within Naruto's life are taking the, uh, him to the start of what you can consider his true life, or his true life calling. And as he runs off into the academy, with a giant smile, he turns back, waving them off as he runs into the center of the academy to be prepared for his first day. Naruto would near the assembly hall as he would feel every eye on the room on either him or another individual. This individual is unknown to him for now as it is a raven-haired boy with a blue shirt the Uchiha symbol smacked on his back. He would try to remember back as his grandmother had explained to him every important individual within his class as he starts naming them off in his head. Hinata Hyuga, Kiba and Azuka. Shino Aburame, Choji Akimichi, and so on until he eventually gets to Sasuke Uchiha. He'd say, that's it, as he would run up to Sasuke saying, you're Sasuke, right? My name's Naruto. Naruto sends you. As Sasuke would look him up, uh, look up and down at him as he tries evaluating the young Senju, as he finally lets out a laugh from his stern look saying, well, Naruto... You look like an exciting person. My name's Sasuke Uchiha. Nice to meet you. And for the first time in a while, they have a proper meeting, you could say. As the teachers start appearing, students are split into classes. Luckily, Naruto and Sasuke are right next to each other, even in the seating chart, as they would fist bump, having been each other's official first friend in the academy. Then, the Hokage, Tsunade, would come up and give a grand speech about the starting of everyone's shinobi life. And then, they would depart to classes where they would start activities. This is where we start spontaneously jumping across the timeline, as there are very few events to cover that happened during the time of the academy. But, the major ones will come up soon. As we see, students would start learning things that the academy only has to offer. Naruto and Sasuke would probably be leading in all of these, as if they probably not learned something like advanced ninjutsu yet, and are probably still in that phase where they are between taijutsu battles and learning how to channel chakra, with Naruto and Sasuke already being capable, thus them getting higher scores than most. Naruto would also be forced not only by Tsunade on her very few off days, but Shizune on her more common off days to study, and Yamato will always be there to remind him once again. As we see, we see Naruto and Sasuke 
either being first or second in the class, depending on who got the best score on the last test, since they have perfect Taijutsu and Ninjutsu scores, at least for now. And Naruto and Sasuke would kind of be best friends and rivals at the same time, since every time they fight, they look like they're having fun, and it's either one or the other that wins. It's not really one over the other in any of these situations, since Ninjutsu, for right now, is prohibited. And one inevitable day, the Uchiha clan massacre would occur, having left Sasuke to not come to school for weeks, maybe even a few months, as he is still in grievance of his family. Naruto, in curiosity, a few weeks later, would obviously go to his grandmother, the first line of information, as he wants to know what happened to the Uchiha clan exactly. Maybe there's something he can do to help Sasuke, and so on and so forth. But Tsunade would not spill a single bit of information, leaving Naruto to wonder what's happening to his new friend. When Sasuke would inevitably return to school, he's a lot more colder and a lot more grim. Every time Naruto would try to talk to him, he would scoff and walk away, probably because he doesn't want any more attachments, or anyone that can get killed leaving him to grieve for them. Naruto wouldn't exactly catch on to this, as he would now focus all the attention and all the time he spent with Sasuke purely on training to get better and develop. And thus, he would finally get down his uh, clone jutsu and transformation using wood style, thanks to Yamato, since we do know both wood transformation and wood shadow clones, or wood clones, are a thing. Obviously, he could just graduate at this point, knowing all the jutsu, and probably having enough knowledge to do all the tests, but instead, Yamato would encourage him to stay in the academy and grow stronger so that he can more quickly climb through the ranks. Since he had already learned what the academy had to offer, Yamato could teach him more advanced ninjutsu skills, and add that some more academical ones too so that when the day of graduation comes, Naruto would be in a better situation. Naruto now stands faced with the ramifications of leaving the academy. He has no friends and no one to coerce with except for the occasional meeting with Tsunade and Shizune and spending almost every waking moment with his sensei Yamato. This would inevitably lead to Naruto becoming a much stronger shinobi much earlier in his career, as he would most likely now graduate before the rest of the people within his class. Even though Yamato had initially told him to hold back for a while, there is nothing more Yamato could teach him since he was borderline already on tuning level. So, two years prior to the rest of the Genin, Naruto would become a Genin himself. With very few students actually knowing of Naruto's graduation, and more likely than not, Sasuke would not actually be one of these. I feel these would be individuals like maybe Shikamaru, Choji, Ino, Hinata, Kiba, and so on. People who have council parents that can give them this information. But to move on, we see that Naruto and Yamato now are faced with a dilemma. Yamato is forced to give Naruto a test and would thus create two wood clones that are transformed before Naruto's appearance to trick him into thinking that these two would be his teammates. Since he had a prior ask Kakashi what type of test he could give a student to really see what they're capable of. Kakashi would not have even at the time known he's talking about Naruto as he would say there's always the bell test. You give two bells to three students and tell them they need to get the bells to be able to pass. This would cause a dilemma of them splitting away from each other, where in fact none of them are capable of even in pairs of two defeating a Jonin. So if they're able to overcome these differences and thus fight together, knowing that one of them will not become a Genin, that's when you pass. It actually doesn't have anything to do with bells. Yamato would smile saying, that's perfect. Especially for Naruto. Naruto's hot-headed thinking that he can do everything on his own. This will be a life lesson, as Yamato would be off. Kakashi would try and go, wait, you mean Naruto? Wait, I was about... What? Yamato was long gone at this point. So we next see Yamato's clones, or who Naruto believes to be other students, and Naruto being explained the events of the bell test, or how they perspire, and how they will be executed. They would all jump to the trees as the two other students, or at least the clones, try to coerce Naruto into working. 
together. Naruto at first would say, no, I think I got this, as he would throw his strongest current wujutsu, which is a giant wooden dragon, not on the level of, say, the water dragon of Zabuza's, but about half its size. He would have chucked it towards Yamato, clearly giving away their position as Naruto would say, okay, then do your work, I guess, as he jumps back, leaving the two clones to fight Yamato. Yamato himself would think that the teamwork didn't work, and so would the clones, as they think Naruto had abandoned them. But inevitably, after the two clones start fighting Yamato as a subtest, I guess you could say, Naruto would jump in trying to gang up, as he would finally grab the bells. Yamato would be surprised that Naruto was able to outspeed him, but he himself had never been the fastest. And Naruto would throw the two bells to the other two clones, saying, you can decide who passes. I can come back in two years or so and become a Genin then. As he would walk away, with the clones turning to pure wood and Yamato calling Naruto back. Naruto would be surprised that these were in fact wood clones and not actual people, as he would question his sensei, with Yamato explaining that there had to be a test of sorts, and due to one of his friends, he had found that this would be the perfect test for Naruto. Naruto, yes, had shown immense skill within this fight, being able to end it within the first few minutes, but nevertheless, he still technically worked together with the clones to accomplish it. Thus, he's ready to become a shinobi, since in the world of shinobi, teamwork is most important. And then he would go on to quote Kakashi on, Those who do not complete their missions are scum, but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. Basically, ending off this entire situation. And with that, part one of What If Naruto Was a Senju has come to an end. And before anyone actually mentions it in the comments, I know the audio on this video was not too great. And I only now realize practically after most of the series is already complete. But do not fret, for at some point this series will get a major reboot where we condense the story a lot, where we go over Naruto or at least OG Naruto in one large video that's going to last between 45 and an hour and 25 minutes. And also a Shippuden variant where we go over the events up to Shippuden that leads up to the animated clip. This series has a lot to offer and I really hope you guys are going to enjoy it. But without further ado, my Discord link's in the description and so is my merch. This has been Boy 6. Peace! Till next time, nuts, we'll meet again In the virtual world where heroes ascend Keep the flame of adventure burning bright Until next time, nuts, let's take flight